and we are recording with uh, what I say now former uh, you know U.S. Attorney Phil Halpern uh, after what six different presidents, thirty six years in the business. Um, you have what I say resigned, and uh, you went out with quite a bang, making national headlines. Can you tell me about that? Well. I refer to say I retired. Uh, the fact of the matter is I stayed in the department a lot longer than I had originally planned uh, in great part due to the fact that I wanted to make sure the case of Duncan Hunter was completed uh, and he was sentenced to prison before I left. And why did you leave? I mean, here's the key. Well, I was troubled by many things in the department. And uh, while I love our office, uh, it's been my home for 36 years and I love the people in it and I love everything it represents because these are great people and I cherish the institution. The fact is, these are different times here. And I took great pride every time I could stand up in court and say to the jury, and I did this every time, it is my privilege to serve the people of the United States. The motto of the Department of Justice is that we are going to fully and fairly enforce the laws of the United States, not the whims or tweets of the president. And when the Attorney General of the United States acts as if he serves the president and not the people, I feel our very democracy is imperiled. There were certain cases uh, that uh, caught your attention, including Manafort, Michael Flynn, Roger Stone, were these the, the cases that really influenced your decision to step down? There wasn't one thing that was the straw that broke the camel's back. The fact of the matter is there was a continual pattern by the attorney general, which made it clear to me that he wasn't impartially enforcing the law. The attorney general of the United States has every right to decide the law that should be prosecuted, exactly who should be prosecuted. You know, that authority vests in him. It doesn't invest in me. All I've ever asked, and it doesn't matter to me if it's a Republican or a Democrat, I was appointed under the Ronald Reagan administration. I've served under more Republican presidents than Democratic presidents, and I've never cared. I mean, we check if you're a career prosecutor or party loyalties at the door. Uh, there's not one single prosecutor I can think of who would think about the party affiliation before prosecuting somebody, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. And I've prosecuted both. Uh, not only did I do uh, Duncan Hunter and Randy Duke Cunningham, but I also prosecuted Maureen O'Connor, who was a Democrat, and other uh, individuals. But that was all meaningless to me. I don't look at that. Uh, in this present administration, I felt it's become increasingly difficult to, to play an even-handed role. And what I've seen is that the president, you know, regardless if it's General Kelly or General Mattis or John Bolton uh, or Jeff Sessions, the president has made it clear to the people in his administration that anyone who places loyalty to the country over blind obedience to him is in trouble. And unfortunately, in my opinion, William Barr, more than most, consistently fell prey to uh, that dictate. And these are the dictates of a traitor, in my opinion, not a patriot, you know, a, a dictator, a totalitarian person. We shouldn't live in a country where the president of the United States is calling for the imprisonment of his criminal rivals. You know, we could take it as a joke early on, you know, and the crowd can get riled up when the president shouted, lock her up, talking about Hillary Clinton. But as we see, it gets more and more serious every day. His claims, you know, to the attorney general to lock up and to prosecute Barack Obama, the former president, to Vice President Biden, his political enemies, this is simply not American. And I'm thankful to see that thus far, uh, the attorney general has resisted those claims. Uh, and it's clear, uh, I believe, that this is even a line that's far, too far for him to cross. You mentioned working under several you know, Republican and Democratic administrations. 
is this, you know, you, you describe in your op-ed meddling, is this the worst meddling with the justice system that you've ever experienced or, or seen? It's the worst meddling I've ever experienced in my career. It's probably not the worst meddling in history, I'd say, uh, but you'd have to go back 50 years to Watergate, you know, with an attorney general who carried out a political agenda of a president. In that case, it was President Nixon and it was John Mitchell. And for what John Mitchell did, uh, he went to jail for. And it was after Mitchell that there were post Watergate reforms that were put in place to ensure that this would never happen again. It's at that time that the department reaffirmed you know, the principle that it would not serve a president, but only serve the people of the United States. So has it happened before? Unfortunately, people forget and history can repeat itself. And uh, John Mitchell is certainly uh, every bit as wrong, if not, uh, strike that. John Mitchell is certainly the most recent worst example of that. But we can only hope that Attorney General Barr will not go down that street. And I have high hopes that he'll finally uh, abandon the ridiculous pursuit, you know, that uh, is embodied in his quixotic Durham investigation of uh, Russian interference in Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Uh, speaking, to, you know, here in KFMB and our local San Diego audience, what should we know locally about the long arm of uh, the Justice Department in, in, in our San Diego cases. I mean, obviously, this is where you worked. Did you experience hands-on meddling here in, in local cases? You should know, and the people here should take great heart in the fact that we have a great office. We have absolutely outstanding people in the U.S. Attorney's Office, and I couldn't be more proud to work with these people, to call them my colleagues, and in many cases to call them my very close friends. And I think everybody should take heart in it. And during my long career, uh, I have felt pressure from time to time, but that pressure typically doesn't come from San Diego. Uh, interestingly, the uh, probably the most pressing example I can think of is when uh, I was investigating with several of my colleagues, the executive director of the CIA, during that investigation, we had pressure put upon us by none other than Harriet Myers, who at the time was White House counsel, uh, who was attempting to prevent us from getting certain information. Uh, fortunately, in the end, justice war, uh, won out. We got the information and uh, we were able to successfully prosecute uh, the executive director and put him in jail. Uh, and I think what I've seen in my entire career is, the Department of Justice is one of the pillars of our society, along with the press. You know, these are the things that allow a vibrant democracy. And I've worked there so long, I've labored in the vineyard of the department so long, because I believed it's the right thing to do. Uh, I cherish those memories. And I couldn't be prouder of the work that we've done in the department, which is why I'm speaking out now, because this is so anomalous. This is so rare. These are perilous times. What is going on is not right. And the people uh, come November 3rd have to sp uh, speak up and go out and vote and make sure their voices are heard. Thank you. And, and um, you know, you, you obviously wanted to get a message across in your op-ed that you, you, you put in, in, in the paper. And if you could give us a headline, what, what is your message? Our democracy will only be safe when the Department of Justice serves the people of the United States and not the president. And you feel the AG is, is overstepping his bounds and his responsibility to the president right now and, and not to the justice system. I believe the pres, uh, strike, let's try that again. I believe the attorney general in a series of cases is demonstrated that he's not being even handed in the enforcement of law. Uh, I was hoping when he uh, misinterpreted uh, the conclusions of the Mueller report, that was a mistake, a solitary mistake. I was willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I think many people were. But when we see 
how we selectively metals in the Stone, Manafort, and Flynn cases. That's a problem. And it becomes a problem because these are all cases where the president was imperiled. These are all friends or associates of the president who harbored and still harbor potentially incriminating information. And for the Attorney General of the United States to put his heavy thumb on the scale and tip it is a disgrace. And I don't know anybody in the department, everybody I talk to believes the same thing about those cases. It's been a, a day since your op-ed came out and since you appeared on CNN and other national programs. What, what kind of reaction have you gotten this morning? Uh, I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I felt uh, right up to the minute, it was unclear to me if I was going to even write an op-ed. And I thought when I wrote it, uh, I would just basically be uh, whistling into a gale force wind that wouldn't be heard. Uh, but I felt it was necessary. Uh, I felt that silence is what truly imperils a democracy. And I thought my voice isn't going to be heard, but at least I'm going to try. And since then, I have been completely uh, overwhelmed and stunned, shocked by the amount of attention this has gotten. And the thing that most impresses me, and really uh, it heartens me greatly, is all the people in the department who've reached out to me and all the people in our, my office who have said, thank you so much for standing up. Uh, I've gotten mes messages of support from DC, uh, from uh, AUSAs who served in Washington, Chicago, you know, LA. Uh, and that's really important and really heartening to me uh, to see how uh, I can at least make some of those people feel a little better about what's going on to give them a voice. After, you know, was it 36 years with the Justice Department? 36. What are the cases that stand out to, to you in your career? There, there, are, there are far too many. Uh, I mean, I think back Lee, uh, to my early days when uh, I uh, did the first cases about the theft of weaponry off U.S. military bases and their transshipment uh, to the Republic of Iran. Uh, in violation of presidential orders. Uh, those cases called for hearings in Congress to uh, reform the system to make sure that our own people, our own civilian workers, wouldn't be stealing F-14 parts that the Iranian government couldn't get. Uh, I think back of a case I did, uh, the first case ever in violation of the presidential embargo to Libya, which uh, involved the indicting of several individuals who were shipping oil equipment that the Libyan government couldn't get uh, to the Libyan regime. Uh, I did the first case, federal case, and, and probably I did 80% of the early cases having to do with anabolic steroids before anybody had ever heard of steroids. And uh, uh, I felt there that I made a difference because I brought, uh, along with uh, Sports Illustrated and a couple other outlets, the question of steroids to the public mind where now there's not a person in the United States who uh, aren't, uh, who is not aware of the dangers of steroid. Uh, I did uh, cases uh, involving counterfeit memorabilia, the whole set of bullpen cases, which highlighted to the public that a lot of the memorabilia they would be buying in airport, uh, airport gift shops and online were actually counterfeits. Uh, my corruption cases, of course, are uh, close to my heart, uh, whether it's Maureen O'Connor, Duncan Hunter, Randy Duke Cunningham, uh, campaign finance cases against uh, uh, Jose uh, Sisuma uh, Azano or uh, Bob Majumder uh, that I did while I was here. Uh, there, there are too many. I, I could go on and on. Uh, I've had a great career. Uh, it, is, uh, it has been my privilege and honor to be able to bring these cases and to serve the American people and work with so many great people in the Department of Justice. And uh, I take heart. I, I'd like to leave off with the fact that I take heart that there are so many great people in the Department of Justice. And uh, uh, I'm confident, you know, that these people are doing their best every day to carry out the laws uh, faithfully uh, on behalf of the people of the United States. Well, thank you for your service and uh, wish you a happy retirement. You, you certainly went out with a bang and, and a message and I appreciate <laughs> you talking to us. Thank you. Mario, it was my pleasure. Take care of yourself.